The T6B has three internal DC power supplies, one receptacle for external DC power, and one integrated AC power supply. The starter generator in the generator mode is the primary source of electrical power for the aircraft. It supplies 28 volts at a max rate of 300 amp hours, which provides enough power to not only operate all onboard electrical gear, but also to recharge the main battery and the auxiliary battery. The generator is monitored and controlled by the generator control unit, or GCU, which is located in the rear cockpit under the right side lower panel. The main battery provides power for engine starts and is capable of supplying power for all aircraft electrical systems, except air conditioning and the heat exchanger. It supplies 24 volts at a rate of 42 amp hours. This will power all battery bus items for approximately 30 minutes or all systems for significantly less. The battery is of a specially designed lead acid type which allows for operations during aerobatic flight. The auxiliary battery, or AUXBAT, is designed to be used as an emergency backup power source. It will only supply power for the backup flight instrument, or BFI, the backup VHF control head, the VHF radio and radio relays, the internal referencing unit, or IRU, and the Fire One warning system. It supplies 24 volts at a rate of 5 amp hours. This provides power for approximately 30 minutes. However, excessive radio calls will shorten that time significantly. The aircraft has a built-in receptacle that is capable of using external power sources with a few caveats. Number one, the battery bus must be operational, meaning battery power connected. Number two, the battery must have at least 22 volts to prevent battery damage when connecting external power. The system does have a built-in under over voltage protection provided by the voltage sensor. If the system detects the nominal limits have been exceeded, it will disconnect by deactivating the external power relay. The final power source is the Permanent Magnet Alternator, or PMA. The PMA is the only AC power source on the T6B and supplies power for only one device. When propeller speed, or NP, gets up to between 40 to 50 percent, it begins to produce usable power. It produces 32 volts AC, which is converted to 28 volts DC by the PMU. When the PMA is operational, it is the primary power source for the PMU. Electrical power on the aircraft can be controlled by the pilot in two ways. The primary control method is via switches located on the right forward switch panel. We will discuss what these switches control when we get to the electrical flow section. The AUXBAT, Avionics Master, and Bus Tie switches, which are located in the front cockpit only, operate like a normal switch. That is to say, when you turn them on, power travels through them. The battery and generator switches, however, are a little different. The battery and generator switches work on a type of magnetic interlock system which allows either cockpit to take control of either system. When the switch on the non-active panel is turned on, it will not only energize its own holding coil, but also deactivate the other switch's coil, allowing the internal spring to turn the switch off. The second power control method is via circuit breakers. Circuit breakers take power from whatever bus they are mounted on and pass that power on to the attached device. Each is designed and built with a different current limit, which is written on the cap of the circuit breaker. They work on the principle of thermal expansion. When the current limit is exceeded, the internal locking pin is removed, allowing a spring to separate the conductor, thus removing power and popping the circuit breaker out. Circuit breakers can also be pulled by the pilot to manually remove power from the device. In this section, we'll walk through current flow, starting with connecting the battery and following the quad fold up to turning on the avionics master switch. When the battery is connected, electrical power travels down the line holding at the battery relay and supplying power to the hot battery bus. Once the battery switch is activated, power travels down the line to the battery relay, activating it, and the external power relay where it waits. With the battery relay now engaged, power is able to travel up the line and hold at the start relay through the shunt to the volt amp meter and up to stopping at the bus tie relay. 
down through the battery bus current limiter, and finally down to the forward battery bus. From the forward battery bus, power travels out to the aft battery bus, out to the avionics master relay where it waits, and finally down to the auxiliary battery where it will recharge the auxbat. From the auxbat, power will travel out to wait at the auxiliary battery relay, as well as down to the standby lights. Lastly, power will flow from the forward battery bus down to the forward aux battery bus and from there down to the aft aux battery bus. Now let's activate the bus tie relay by turning the bus tie switch to norm. This will send a signal to the relay allowing it to close. Power can now travel through the connection down to and through the generator bus current limiter and energize the forward generator bus. From the forward bus, power flows out to the aft generator bus as well as to the avionics master relay where it waits. Now that all the basic systems are powered up, let's connect external power. Once the external power cable is connected and the source is turned on, power will flow down the line and hold at the external power relay. The power will also flow down to the voltage sensing circuit where it is checked for under or over voltage. Once it's verified, it will flow over to the external power relay where combined with the signal from the battery switch, it will activate the relay. External power, being the higher voltage of 28 volts, will now take over powering all systems, as well as recharging the battery and the aux battery as needed. Once the cockpit all flights checklist is complete, we're ready for engine start. Though not shown on the diagram, moving the PCL to the start ready range will send a signal to the PMU. This, combined with selecting auto reset on the starter switch, will activate the start relay, allowing power to travel to the starter, energizing it and starting the engine. As the PMU senses the engine is up and running, it will deactivate the starter relay, removing power from the starter. You can also put the starter switch in the manual mode to bypass the PMU. However, this will inhibit auto start protections. Once the engine is up and running, we can now signal the lineman to disconnect external power. As the lineman shuts down the external source, the external power relay loses its input and disengages, returning priority to the battery for all power. We are now ready to bring the generator online. After starter deactivation, the starter generator will default back to the generator mode. It will then supply power down the line to the generator relay where it will wait. It also supplies power to the generator bus. Turning on the generator switch will send a signal to the generator relay, activating it and allowing the generator to now power all active components. And, just like external power, this will also allow for the battery and aux battery to be recharged. You can verify your power state by checking your volt amp meter. When running on battery power, you should see approximately 24 volts with negative amperage, while running on the generator power, you should see approximately 28 volts with positive amperage. Next, we will turn on the auxiliary battery switch. This will send a signal down to the aux bat relay, activating it. As the relay activates, power to the forward aux bat bus will now be supplied by the same input that is maintaining the charge on the auxiliary battery. Without the aux bat switch being turned on, the aux bat would not be able to supply backup power in the event of a power failure. And finally, after waiting at least 10 seconds from generator switch activation, allowing for amperage stabilization to prevent avionics system damage, we can now activate the avionics master switch. This will send a signal to both avionics master relays, activating them. This will also allow power from the forward battery and generator buses to travel down and energize the forward avionics buses and through them to the aft avionics buses. All buses and systems should now be energized. In this section, we'll cover electrical malfunctions, their indications, likely causes, and recommended procedures. With the generator failure, your primary indications are going to be a generator cast light with its associated master warning and audible alarm. When checking your iCast display, you'll see your voltages drop to below 28 volts and you should be showing negative amperage. Likely causes for this malfunction include the generator switch being off, starter switch in the manual mode, a generator malfunction, or a GCU malfunction. The NATOP's recommended procedure for this is number one, Verify the starter switch is set to norm in both cockpits. Number two, verify or move the generator switch to on in either cockpit. If it is already in on, you may move it to off and then back to on. And finally, if power has not yet been restored, 
press the generator reset button in the front cockpit for a minimum of one second. If none of these steps restore power, then you should begin descending below 10,000 feet as required, pull out your pocket checklist, and go through the checklist to start reducing your battery consumption. Generator bus failure. With the generator bus failure, your primary indications will be the same as that with the generator failure. In addition, you will also see loss of left MFD, loss of UHF comms, VHF nav and DME, loss of TAD, as well as a master caution light and multiple cast messages. This is assuming the fault is caused by a gen failure and an open bus tie. If the bus fails for another reason, indications will be the same except you will show 28 volts with positive amperage and no gen warning. The most likely causes for this malfunction would be generator failure with bus tie open, generator bus current limiter failure, or disconnect or damage of the bus itself. The NATOPS procedure for this is very simple. Turn the bus tie switch to norm and land as soon as practical. However, turning the bus tie to norm will drain the battery at a substantially increased rate. Battery failure. Unfortunately, there are no guaranteed indications for a battery failure. However, one indication you may see is a spike in positive amperage as a generator attempts to recharge the failed battery. There are no NATOPS procedures for a failed battery. Battery bus failure. With a bat bus failure, your primary indications will be loss of the right and center MFDs, which will force the left MFD to default to the primary flight display. You will also see master warning and caution lights with their associated audible alarm. After switching the PFD to the ICAST page, your secondary indications will be multiple cast messages, most notably being the battery bus. Additionally, you should still see approximately 28 volts with positive amperage. The most likely causes of this malfunction would be battery failure with the bus tie open, bat bus current limiter failure, or disconnect or damage of the bus itself. In this instance, NATOPS recommends number one, descend below 10,000 feet MSL since once the battery is depleted, you will lose OBOGs. Number two, open your bus tie. This will isolate generator and its bus from any potential battery or battery bus faults. Number three, Verify the aux bat switch is on and be aware that from the point of battery bus failure or turning the aux bat switch on, whichever occurs last, you will have approximately 30 minutes of power for the backup instruments. Number four, turn the backup VHF control head on to allow for VHF radio control. And finally, five, prior to landing, you will need to pull the emergency landing gear handle to extend the gear. If battery power is still available, you will also be able to extend the flaps. However, the gear and flap position indicators will be inoperative. Bus tie failure. The primary indications of a bus tie failure will be bus tie cast message, master caution light and its audible alarm. You will also see a voltage drop to approximately 24 volts with negative amps. The most likely cause of this malfunction is the bus tie switch being in open or failure of the bus tie relay. The NATOPS recommended procedure for this is the same as that for the generator bus. Move or verify the bus tie switch to norm and land as soon as practical. While aircraft systems will operate normally, be aware that you will only have approximately 30 minutes of battery power for battery bus items. Battery and generator failure. Identification of a battery and generator failure is really quite simple. You will lose everything except the five items powered by the auxiliary battery bus. The most likely cause of this malfunction is a generator failure coupled with a depleted main battery. If this happens, you will need to immediately begin a descent to below 10,000 feet MSL since both the OBOX and cabin pressure will be lost. Next, verify or turn on the aux bat switch to ensure the use of the five emergency systems. And finally, land as soon as possible. If you enjoyed this video or found it informative, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing. If you didn't, or if there's something you found inaccurate or incomplete, please leave a comment. And finally, if there are any topics you would like to see covered, 
either leave a comment or send me an email at sweetycraft at gmail.com.